there's always been room for exhortation with the people of God. It's, it's, it's always been a, God's manner to exhort them to um, take up and to be more interested and to have more concern and more regard for the things that he's said, the things that he's done, the things that he is doing presently in, in the people. See this, our minds have to be stirred up. And this is what we've done. Today we've, we've been stirred up by the recollection of what God's already accomplished. We can stir up our pure minds by way of remembrance. The fact of the matter is that as long as we're here, in this body, we need exhortation. There's a place for it. God's actually, this is the part, of the part of the church, is it not? That a place for, you, got, you need comfort? Oh, you need comfort. You need someone to proclaim the word? You need someone to do it. And you need someone to exhort you to earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered to you. Why? Because if you don't, you won't be saved. I don't care what, if you were saved yesterday or not. If you don't earnestly contend today, You'll, you can go on to perdition, can you not? Yes. While we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. There's a sense in which we're not present with the Lord. So while we're here, we exhort one another daily. While it's called the day, just was. See, the good news is it's not going to be forever. <laughs> we're going to have, the exhortation going to be a time where exhortation ends. But it's not yet. It's not yet. Now, while it's called the day, we exhort one another. God has given us the ability. This is quite a blessing. We've been given the ability by God. We've been given grace to exhort one another, which means you've been given to see things from a different perspective than me. And when you say it, then I can see it from that perspective. And oh, now it makes more sense for me to give all diligence. It's one thing for me to say, you better give all diligence. But if you make it reasonable... See, if you can take the things that have been said and make them more reasonable, now you've helped me. Now I will give all diligence in making my calling and election. Sure, these things have to be done. In other words, these things have to be spoken. An exhortation is spoken. I can think about how I'm going to exhort you, but i got to say it. It's got to come out. It's got to be formed into words to where you can understand them. While it is today, well... We'll give heed to the things that have been spoken. We need to be reminded that we have an old man that is corrupt, according. It is corrupt. We've got him. And we've been given something to do with him. You crucify the flesh with the affections and lust. You, you just go ahead and do that. We've been given something to do with it. This continual crucifixion requires strength, spiritual strength to do it. Well, how do you get the spiritual strength to do it? Well, you, you're renewed. You're renewed in the spirit of your mind. How does that happen? Well, you, you get around saints of like precious faith, and before you know it, the things of heaven, they, they kind of like brighten up. You start seeing what God's done in the earth, and the things of heaven, they become more real to you today. And that gives you the strength to be able to cast off the deeds of the body, just subdue them, cast them off. God's working his will. God is working his will in the midst of the earth. Now, that what, we've, what we've heard today, see, this is, this is like oh, over everything else, there's God's sovereignty. He is sovereign. And you can see that in the text. For my own name's sake. That's why you haven't been consumed. I'm doing something that's greater than you. You want to look at, look at you, look at you. No. Look at God. He's doing something that's far greater than any one generation can ever, ever portray. It's going to take all the generations of the earth. And, and when they're perceived at the end, and you look back across time, you'll see God's done everything well. Everything well. He didn't consume them. They deserved to be consumed. They had sin. The soul that sinneth it shall die, right? And yet, see, for my own name's sake, I'm not going to go into the city. Because if I do, I'll consume them. I'll, I'll do it. But I'm not going to do it. Why? For my own name's sake, I'm doing something that's greater than this present generation. We need to keep this truth in our mind. That's why we've been given the testimony of Scripture. I mean, we're not, you look back and say, well, we're so much greater than that. Well, you take Christ out of the picture and you'll see how much greater you are than they. 
It's because of the place we've been put in Christ Jesus. We can look back and we can see the sovereignty of God over the whole thing. God endured with much long suffering the previous generations. And how much, how much more should our generation, here's the exhortation, how much more we that have been given a place in Christ Jesus, exalted in the person of Christ Jesus, being able, given grace to be able to see what these things mean. How much more are we going to be judged more harshly? On the day of judgment, we've been given to see great things. Why? So that we might excel. We might serve God acceptably with godly fear. God delights. I love this. This, this verse, um, this, um, verse 26, 27. I love this. Come, let's reason together. Come. Think about this. This is the God of glory. He delights when his people, when they start considering and reasoning on things based on the character of God. Yeah. Now, he said, now we're getting somewhere. Yeah. He, he knows that if man will just reason on him, on him, on his nature, on his character, they'll come to the right conclusions. And what will they do? They'll come closer to him. They'll come, even if it doesn't make sense to come closer. Abraham, what did he say? As soon as he started coming a little bit closer, he says, show me your glory. It didn't make any sense to the flesh. He didn't say that on the bottom of the mountain when it was all shaken. He gets closer to God. He says, show me your glory. See, this is, you start reasoning on the nature of God. See him for who he is. You'll come to the right conclusion. And this is where preachers, this is what we've, see, we've heard something today that can bring us closer to God and so the exhortation is to do it. Do it. Come closer because when you do, you'll get the understanding. You'll understand better because you've been closer to God. Now, these things have to be declared. They have to be sp spoken about. Or he says, he says, put me in remembrance. Now, does he say, instead of just think about it. I said, he says, put me in the, in the remembrance. Let's plead together. Declare thou. Say it out loud. You know, you find something. When you say something out loud, you find out really how much you don't know about it. Yeah. When you start declaring it, you start saying, I thought, I thought I knew a lot about that. But when I start talking about it, I find out my deficiencies. You start declaring to God his nature, you'll see how much, how much little you really, really compre have comprehended. But as you do it, you'll get more. As you say it, as you preach it, you'll get more about it. God delights when we declare his nature. Oh, it's just a good stuff. In order, in order that I would like you. And that's what it says. In order that you might be justified. See, you've seen something about God. God's given you to see something. Now, as you use the things that he's given you to see, you'll be justified in the sight of God. But in other words, you'll be walking by faith. In other words, you'll be walking in the spirit and you won't satisfy the lust of the flesh. Well, that's, a, that's the exhortation for today.